Hello, in this video we'll be looking how you can create a sample content to your existing tenant by using the SharePoint provisioning service. So using the SharePoint provisioning service you can generate similar looking site collections and content which is visible in the SharePoint lookbook site. So you can see really cool looking sites and structures which you can actually take into use in any of the tenants in the world. So you can actually install this kind of an example content and example structures to any tenants in matter of seconds or in matter of minutes. And how do we make this happen in practice? So first of all, let's actually go to the provisioning sharepointbmp.com which is the URL for the SharePoint online provisioning service. And from here, you can then see a selection of different templates which can use for generating example content. The example templates, they typically are based on one site collection and they have sample uh, structures and sample content inside of them uh, with certain exceptions. So as an example, SharePoint Starter Kit is a much more complicated uh, uh, template which contains multiple site collections and Office 365 themes based on the Ignite designs which Microsoft used in Ignite 2018. Now let's have a simple sample of first and then we can actually see how we adjust and deploy this in practice. So for all of the templates you can scroll down and have a look on what are you expected to receive when the provisioning in provision is completed and these are these designs are based on the SharePoint lookbook sites uh, like mentioned. Now what you need to make sure is that you are signed in to the tenant uh, so in my case I'm signed in as a Megan Bowen which is, who is a tenant administrator in this tenant um, so I can then go to the site and I can add to your tenant click add to your tenant functionality. And in this case, uh, I haven't yet authorized the solution to actually operate in my tenant. So we will see this authentication on authorization uh, UI from Azure AD. And this happens only once and tenant administrator has to approve and give the consent for the provisioning service. So it can be used within the tenant. Now that's going to take a while or a few seconds uh, and then we can actually see the selection uh, or filling uh, form uh, for the template which we're about to provision. And this basically is nothing more than uh, send, uh, ending or providing uh, the needed parameters, what's the title as an example and what's the URL. Whenever you are adjusting the URL we are also double checking is there any existing content within that URL because uh, providing an example site collection on top of existing uh, site collection might not be what you're looking for. You can actually do that, but there's a, a confirmation uh, box uh, visible when that happens. Now, when you have decided your URL, uh, and then you're ready to go and get this provisioned. You can just simply click the provisioning button in here, which validates pre the pre-requirements. So this one is checking against the tenant, uh, sorry, the template uh, requirements is your tenant ready to be uh, used for this template. So certain templates, as an example, they require that there's an app catalog available and that is pre-validated uh, against your tenant uh, before the provisioning is actually started. So in this case, we're using a relatively simple template. So it's nothing more than as selecting the template and clicking confirm, and that's going to start the provisioning process. So this one will take like roughly five to uh, three to five minutes, and you will get an email to provide an email address when the provisioning is com completed. It's also important to notice that you can actually provision multiple sites at the same time. So you don't have to wait uh, the templates and, and provisioning the completed. This has no impact whatsoever on the speed or performance or uh, uh, success rate of, of the provisioning. So we can actually do here uh, landing two and let's provision a landing two site there. Well, it's first validating the URL and then uh, clicking provision, it's going to do the prerequisite uh, checkup and confirmation that we can start the provisioning. And there we go, there's another provisioning now queued up and that's going to get, uh, again, send an email to this email address. So let me actually do a few more uh, simple ones. So as an example, the really fast ones are the leadership side or the workshop side. So let's actually do a workshop side here as well. We can queue, it, queue that one up. Uh, in the engine. You notice that when I select that now the template, there's no confirmation of authorization anymore because that was a one-time operation. So now let me actually uh, use the workshop as the URL, validating site URL that there's any nothing anymore, nothing overlapping on that one in the tenant. Clicking provision, pre-checking of the permissions and app catalogs and everything else if needed. 
and the confirmation of the provisioning. And there we go, that's now queued up as well. Now, I'm going to actually queue up a one more slightly complicated uh, uh, template, which will take a while, like I said, with just the SharePoint starter kit. So this one, like defined here, it is actually provisioning uh, a communication site um, and example additional site collections. It's also uh, provisioning uh, site scripts and site designs to the tenant. And it's also provisioning a different kind of customizations for SharePoint Online, which are using Office UI Fabric. So precise description of this template is in here. It creates a different, three different site collections with the cool looking UI, uh, customizations like the footer. Um, there's additional web parts and all of those uh, being available as well, including tenant themes, which are based on the Ignite 2018 tenant themes, which Microsoft used in Ignite 2018. So let's actually get this one provisioned as well. Slightly more complicated, like I said, um, but uh, the, the startup form is still relatively uh, simple because it provisions three different site collections. Uh, it's going to differentiate those site collections using a URL prefix. So I'm going to use con as the uh, prefix. So that will then double check that uh, they are the con portal, con marketing and con uh, HR, if I remember correctly, are the your site collections which are getting created using the SharePoint starter kit. And clicking provision, it's going to again double check is the app catalog existing. Do we have term store administrative permissions? Because those are prerequisites for this template and then additional settings as well. And uh, it also says that uh, applying this template takes up to 25 minutes. And that's because it's quite complicated template uh, to be applied, but there's plenty of then example demo content available after this one has been provisioned. So let's click again, confirm, and that's going to start the provisioning process. We will get an email again on the Megan B address when the provisioning is completed. Now, most likely at this time, uh, if you go back on the email, we can actually see that there are already emails uh, around those templates which were created. So if we go to the Contoso workshop site, that was already created. So if we, uh, let's actually allow uh, da, 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 here, uh, if we click the Contoso workshop link now, we can actually see a nice SharePoint lookbook defined site with all of the imaginary and images uh, defined uh, in the SharePoint lookbook. So all of the content which you see here are defined based on the SharePoint lookbook uh, uh, designs from the design organization. SharePoint design organization. There are certain things which you might be aware. Of. So as an example, this form in the original SharePoint design, lookbook design or in the Ignite 2018 sites were, was actually a Power Apps form, but there is no way for associating a Power App form using an API. So the templates cannot do that. So this is now an image which is then demonstrating those functionalities. So these are, there are certain API limitations here and there which might be visible on the output of the tenants. Um, and we will keep on evolving these templates. So as an example, right now when I'm provisioning this, the header setting isn't yet available in the template. That's going to be there in a matter of few days after this video is actually uh, uh, completed. But you can absolutely go here and click header and say that please use uh, the, the section background for, from the header based on the whatever color you actually want uh, or need it. So you can adjust the sites and outcomes based on your business requirements. Or at the same time, uh, one thing which is coming relatively soon on the templates is the background color. So if you're looking into, as an example, modifying this section background color for uh, people profiles. Uh, let's see, where do we actually have here a good background which we could actually define. Here we go. This one is a good one. So we're able to actually here define a background color for the section. And this support for this one will be added uh, in the templates relatively soon. So in a matter of two, one or two days after this video has been actually completed. So early May, uh, these templates actually have a background colors defined like they are in the SharePoint lookbook site. So you don't have to do any manual changes anymore uh, at that point. But that's it. Uh, that's the SharePoint provisioning service. A, re a really, really nice set of templates based on uh, our SharePoint design team designs, uh, based on the lookbook designs, uh, which you can use for generating site collections and content for your demo tenants, or a structures from where you can start defining how the modern SharePoint will look like for you uh, in your own tenant. 
So that's it. Uh, really cool stuff. And please provide us feedback, uh, provide us input around what do you need and if there's any exceptions or any problems of using the service. We're looking into releasing this service around end of May 2019 uh, from the current beta or previous status to the GA status. So your feedback, your input is absolutely welcome before that and also after that as well, if you're watching this video after it goes to the GA status. But thank you for watching and hopefully you'll find this useful.